I did two interviews with Brando and been at his home. I was at his home three or four times. I went to dinner with him twice. Uh, I found him fascinating. A quick, get, uh, they called me one day and said, Marlon Brando's going to do your show. He called me up. He picked me up. We took a drive around Beverly Hills, went up to his house. He didn't want to talk about movies. Uh, there's nothing in his house that said movie. And then at the end of the interview, for some reason, he kissed me. And I use it as a prop when I do in my act. My do a nightclub act or I do a speech. I always say that Marlon Brando is the only male that's ever kissed me on the lips in my life. Never been kissed by a man, and I can't stop thinking about it. But I appreciate his craft. I loved him. I love him to this day. Bill Cosby's a very interesting guy. He tries to control the interview. Uh, and he, when he wants to be serious and you want to be funny, he'll be serious. And you can't, the interviewer is always in control. I mean, it's his show, it's my show. But Cosby tries to take it. But I always have one warm spot for him in that uh, we did a show once, two shows with him that I always remember. One in the house he grew up in, which is now gutted in South Philadelphia. It's a, it's a war zone. We did the show right in the middle of the living room he lived in. She burnt out windows and everything. That was momentous. And uh, right before my heart surgery, my last show I did was with Costas before I went to the hospital. And he came uh, with a big bear dressed as a doctor, <laughs> a stuffed animal. And he kept it with him the whole hour, saying that that was my doctor. Betty Davis. Oh, I love Betty. She was incredible. Now, I had stopped smoking, but she smoked throughout, you know, you know, Sean Penn are the only two people that have smoked throughout a television interview that, I, that I've done on CNN. We used to smoke all the time, every guest, but they don't smoke anymore. But Betty, if you told her not to smoke, she would leave. Sean Penn the same way. They, Betty, her little, nap, her little handkerchiefs. And I asked her, there was reports in the paper that she was having difficulty with Faye Dunaway in a movie they did. What was the difficulty? And she said, the problem was that I usually prefer working with professionals. Pretty good. That's a lot, yeah. <laughs> um, Bob Hope. You could never get into Bob Hope. Uh, everything with hope was cerebral, off the top. I have no idea what Bob Hope, and I interviewed him a multitude of times, radio and television, felt about things. I know what he said about things, but I have no idea what he felt about things. He was a interesting character to me, Bob Hope. Everything was just off the top, and I couldn't get here. I never found the, the there there. Jerry Lewis. He was very good to me. An incredible ego. Funny. Awkward. Boyish. I still don't know how sincere he is. I don't know. Maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. He's an enigma. Paul McCartney. I like Paul very much. I, he's very honest. One of the thrills that I had in my life of thrills was having dinner with Paul McCartney and then having him come to my house and play piano while we sat around and had just some coffee. And the nanny for my boys is peeking in the door saying, I don't believe this. Paul McCartney is playing piano in this house. Do you remember what he played? Uh, a song that he, he was trying to write a song, and then my, we played some of my wife's songs for him. He liked her very much. I think he did a little Eleanor Rigby. Oh, yeah, he was explaining why that, that tune changed some things in music. It broke rules. 
we were talking about breaking rules in music, and the great the great writers of music always broke rules. In fact, I told him a story that the famous conductor of the Boston Pops, Arthur Fiedler was on my, this is when I appreciated the Beatles for the first time. I used to make fun of the Beatles in the 60s, you know, oh, I want to hold your hand, right? So I've had Arthur Fiedler on once. And as an aside, I say to him jokingly, well, what do you think of this current craze, the Beatles? And he says, the Beatles are our Beethoven. What? They're our Beethoven. The music that they write will be here when we're both gone. They broke rules. I compare them to Bach in jazz influence and interpretation and chord changes. And McCartney's face just lit up when I was telling him this. And then I remembered that Fiedler used an example of Elmer Rigby, and then that's when McCartney played it. And he, da 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 dee dee. Da 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 dee da da dee da da dee da da dee. Yeah. He called that musical brilliance, and I, for then on, appreciated them. But it was Fiedler that taught me to appreciate them. Tammy Faye Messner. I felt so sorry for Tammy Faye. Well, she gave me one of the most emotional moments to come on the night she's going to die, and say she's going to die, and say goodbye. And then uh, we made the announcement of her death. They said they would call us, and I would announce when she died. And then I stopped on the way flying east. I stopped uh, in Palm Springs, and they did a memorial service for her, and I spoke. I felt very sorry for Tammy Faye. I think Tammy Faye was a victim. I don't think she was ever a thief. I don't think she ever knowledgeably sold any, stole anything. I felt a lot of humanity for her, and I understood how people loved her. She was what she was. Dan Rather. I'm still a very close friend of Dan's. I like Dan, and uh, whenever I'm in New York, I try to see him. Uh, I think he was uh, and one of those broadcasters that got involved in the story. Uh, I'm not that kind of broad. I don't want to be in the story, but he's one of the best at being in the story he's covering. So he becomes part of the story. When he was a White House correspondent, he was brilliant. But it was himself getting into the story, the back and forths with Nixon and the like. And I, he might have gotten a bad shake from CBS in that, as he told me, yes, they didn't have the original thing signed by the general. They had a copy. But the story, in his mind, was true that Bush hadn't served, and that he stood by that and felt for that. I, I give him a lot of credit. Sharon Stone. Almost dated Sharon Stone. <laughs> uh, she lives a couple blocks away. I think she's one of the most sexiest people I've ever known. Uh, I think she's a terrifically underrated actress. I think her performance in Casino which got her a Golden Globe, was over the incredible. I think she was, in, and I like her as a person. I know there are people that don't like her, and that she, her reputation isn't the greatest among people, but I've never had a bad moment with her. And I, I, she, she ain't bad to look at either. She does it every time she comes on, but it started once out as Brando kissing me. For some reason, she said, you know, you're, you're cute. I said, what do you mean? With the suspenders, you're cute. So she took them and batted them against me. And that hurts, by the way. <laughs> but you're not going to say, hey, stop. Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, she's, she's, she's a great person in, in her giving and her fight against AIDS. She's a diva in, in, the, in the best and worst sense. I mean, you, time, you wait for Elizabeth Taylor. We taped her once for a special for TNT, which is one of the reasons I hate taping. But the taping was scheduled at two, and she came at four. And that's discourteous to me, but I like her. 
I, you know, I forgive that. My wife is late all the time, so I got, I can't hate late, but I hate lateness. In fact, that's the one thing I hate the most.